Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to start to utilize our noggins and use some of the functionality that is within Hornresp to do some more powerful designs. Now, in our first video, I showed you how to load your own driver into Hornresp and we had modeled a very simple closed box design. Then part two, we had kicked off onto something a little bit more popular within the design aspects where we had modeled a simple base reflex. Part three, we are still going to model a base reflex with one exception. The type of model that we are going to do is going to be called an offset design. Offset designs are a little bit more complicated, but the reward can actually be quite nice. If you have a look at this ginormous driver or box that we have over here, let's say, for example, I wanted to use a driver that might have some really good base extensions, but requires a very, very big box of which I might want to make this box quite skinny and quite tall because I don't want it to take up too much floor space. This could also in many ways be considered a floor standing speaker of which you might find like a dual eight little eight inch drivers and a, and a little tweeter between them or maybe something on the top. But these are taller speaker box designs in nature. However, the problem that we run into realistically with these designs can be some resonance modes. It is important to understand that we have some square and rectangular surfaces in here that are completely and utterly promoting standing waves and reflections and resonances. So the front and the back, the two sides, the top and the bottom. The way that Hornresp is going to look at this is actually very similar to the way it would look at if we were modern a transmission line. The only difference is it's not a mass loaded transmission line, it's still a base reflex. So it looks at it slightly differently. Traditionally, a base reflex might look something very similar to this. We could have round ports, we could have a secondary driver, this port could be between two speakers, it's really all the same thing. But for the most part, the way that Hornrest is gonna look at this is going to be more of a traditional layout. When we start to model a speaker, that has some form of distance variation between the port and the woofer itself, it kind of starts to model things in a way that, well, is going to be confusing. So let's jump into it. And please, again, guys, if you have not watched the first two videos, I highly suggest you take that opportunity because now things are going to start to become a little bit more complicated. So we're going to keep things as a base reflex but rather than do a normal, we are going to now select offset. Okay. You can kind of see the resemblance between what we have over here. There's our woofer, right? On the edge of this section, here is our port all the way down the bottom end here, and we have some distance between these two components. Well now, if you notice, we now have these S's and these L's, which are starting to come up. Now, our VRC, which was our volume, is no longer there. In fact, it's set to zero. However, the area of the port and the length of the port is still showing up, but everything else looks different. So let's go and load in our driver. I'm going to use the Salto again, just because that's what we've used for the previous two. And if we were to consider the size of this cabinet, which is 60 by 60 by two meters, this is a ginormous box. In fact, this box is possibly going to be way too big versus our driver's actual requirements. So we've got to keep that in mind, but there are a lot of speakers that lend themselves to really large boxes, which is kind of indicated by VAS. Okay, so let's go and click calculate so we can save this in and you can see that we have this 28 liter box, which is tiny. Let's go and jump up to our input parameters so we can bring our menu back. We're gonna to come to tools and click on loudspeaker wizard. We don't want to mask our chamber resonances at all, Wow, 
We have S's and L's. What on earth is going on here? And this is one of those things that start to confuse beginners in horn risk because suddenly now there is terminology that you will not find in any other box design softwares. But it's really easy to understand. If I explain it to you like this, that S is going to be, or will stand for size. L is going to stand for length. We have a top and a, well, this could be the top if we're looking at it like this. That could be the bottom, right? And we have a length somewhere between the center of our driver to the top edge of this box, the center of our driver to the center of our port, and the center of our port to the bottom of this box. Okay. If I lose you, please leave a comment. <laughs> All right. Now, these are defaultly loaded to 500 to simplify things. We have to specify this. It is important to understand that if you attempt to come down to chamber, while it's saying that we have a 28 liter box, if we have a look at VRC, the volume of our box, it's set to zero. The only thing that we have that we had previously on our base refix design is the area and the length of our port. Okay. So where is this design and tool getting this volume? Well, if we go back to these sizes, we can derive, if you'd followed the previous video, our port was 50 centimeters wide by 10 centimeters tall. And if we take 50 times 10, it's going to give us a value of 500. 50 wide times 10 high gives us a value of 500. This value is in centimeters. So we can assume that by changing these, because if we are 50 or 500 all the way through the entire length of this box, and we have a total of 55, right? We in fact are going to come out to a volume of 28 liters internally. This does not include the displacement of the driver and it does not include the displacement of the actual port. Do not forget that. If you're modeling something that's really tight and you forget to subtract those volumes, this volume is not going to be equal to 28 liters. Okay, in this particular instance, I have gone to the absolute extreme and we are basically making a very tall, skinny subwoofer box, which is ginormous. Right, this is, in, is possibly going to be like six or 700 liters, maybe even more, because our width is going to start off on the extreme side. We are going to be 600 millimeters wide by 600 millimeters in length or in depth, right? So if we were to do the mass, 60 times 60 gives us a value of 3,600. So let's go and change this to 3600. And I'm going to do this by simply just grabbing here and coming up until we get to 3600. Uh, right, sorry for all the additional clicking, gentlemen. Let's just quickly pull that down. Okay, so you can see we have made this top side of this box 60 by 60. So it's growing on us. And while that is growing, you can see our overall volume is in fact increasing. So let's go and do exactly the same for S2. Don't worry if you don't know what things are, I'm going to explain them, but I'm sure you can start to see some relationship between these lines. Let's do the same thing for S3 and make this also 3600. Okay, and we're gonna do that for S4 as well. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so now you can imagine we basically have our widths and our depths right, but this length is not correct. This box is a ginormous two meters in height. Yes, unrealistic, but it is the nicest way for me to show you the relationship using a subwoofer. So we now have got our areas correct because this is constant, okay? doesn't taper or go from smaller to wider, whatever the case is, but we can see that we are still quite a short box. Now, let's talk about our first relationship, which is going to be L12. 
L12 is a relationship between the center of the driver and the bottom of our box. So if we were to make L12 as close to zero as we possibly can, you will see that we are basically on the edge of this box. Can you see that? And if I was to take the last length and make that as close to zero as possible, you can see that our port is basically on the edge of the box. So the center of this line is right on the edge here. The center of that line is right on the edge here. Making sense. So what would this relationship be on L23? Well, that relationship equates to the distance from the center of the port to the center of the woofer. You with me? If you're not with me, again, leave your question in the comment side. But in reality, we want to try and match this model. Sometimes it can be very helpful to draw your box out, try and visualize what you're looking for for your overall um, look and feel, and then come into horn rest because you should have some dimensions to measure off of. So we need to make this whole thing a lot bigger. Our box is in fact a ginormous two meters in length. So let's jump out to two meters and let's come down to 210 and make that as follows. Let's put our woofer back into our box. Okay, roughly. And let's go and put some distance between these components. So we could imagine that our port, unlike our drawing over here, here is our driver, there is our port, right? Somewhere over there. We can see that establishment over there. So the distance between the center of this driver to the center of our port is 31.9 centimeters. The distance between the center of our driver to the edge of that box is 22.1 centimeters. And the distance between the port and the bottom of our cabinet is 146 centimeters. Okay, and like I was saying, our box is a ginormous, or should I say a colossus, 720.5 liters. Now this is way too big for this driver. However, let's go and have a look at what our response is. Ooh, this is what we started off with in this 28 liter default box, and here is what we are seeing now, based down to 10 hertz. This might seem appealing, guys, but I promise you this is not what we want. But I want to show you what happens as we shift the distance between the port and the driver. Look at what happens to the resonances. Can you see how this is starting to shift and change a little bit? But we have one major problem is that the only thing that we have not adjusted is in fact our port size as a whole. So let's assume that we are going to model a port like we have in our previous versions of our base reflex cabinets, of which we are going to be 50 wide by 10 high. Okay, 10 times 50 is going to be 500. So let's come here to the area of this port and we're gonna drag this up and make this 500. Okay, already we can start to see that our tuning is a little bit more realistic. And right now we are 10 centimeters in depth. Let's come back here and have a look at what is going on. Okay, let's move this and now it's going to become more apparent because we have increased the area and thus increased the overall resonance that is going to take place in the interaction in our system. As I move this further out, you can see that we are starting to improve this resonance mode over here, right? That's like kind of smack back in the region that we are wanting to kind of work with. So I can now adjust this and adjust each component's placement to try and get the best overall response. We've got to keep in mind that if we come up to our schematic, things have to fit in. Whoops, that's a system model. I'll explain that to you now. So no, in fact, we can't make that any further right. So we can assume that we can go quite close to the edge there without running out of driver space. And, you know, right. So modeling an offset driver or an offset alignment gives us the ability to understand 
the acoustic relationship as well as the electrical relationship between those components. The way it models, at least to some degree, a offset driver is very similar to that of a transmission line because nothing would really be much different what I'm seeing and using here to that of a transmission line. So if this is making sense to you, then in fact, if we were to kick this top off, right, boom, like so, and we were to come back in here to the sketch, I'm going to delete this guy over here. Uh, come on, delete, delete. And I was to delete this constraint and move this somewhere down to say over here or perhaps one third roughly of the length of that right did i not delete that little thing okay well it's there imagine that that port is gone we basically would be modeling a transmission line speaker in its simplest form so being able to understand a offset reflex design is going to give you the foundation to in fact start to understand the principles of what all the yeses and the ls stand for in almost all the other designs within Hornresp. Hopefully I have not lost you and again if you need any help drop a comment in the comment section. But this is about as simple as I can try and illustrate an offset to you. If, for example, you found that this box was way too big for your driver, you can adjust it. Simply, again, try and draw things out because it's going to help you a lot. In this particular instance, we are 60 by 60. We could, in fact, make this 50 by 30, of which, if we were to do that mess, we are going to land up with 5, 10, 15. Right, we basically drop this down to somewhere round about here and as you make these changes so you will find that if we go to schematic your volume is going to also decrease to come out to a more usable <laughs> box of volume and again it's going to change the overall um, tuning of the system so you would in fact need to go back and readjust the size of your port and uh, let's just click like so and let's bring this down as well right uh, let's give it three clicks down so now we've shrunk our box virtually by a little bit more than half and this is going to be kind of traditional to a very large extended low frequency uh, base reflex and again the same thing guys you can now shift these little parts apart from each other and of course you can also come back into your chamber and change the overall length of those ports and its volume you can notice that at least within this we are actually pretty much looking like a conventional base reflex cabinet However, because of the length and the offset, in some instances we can slightly improve the base response, but there is no free lunch. While we might improve the base response and the potential base extension, we could in fact be increasing more resonance modes, which generally speaking, if you can see it over here, you will in fact see it in your impedance response as well. Right, see all these little bumps up top here? Well, that's part of why it models it kind of like a transmission line come horn. There we go. That is it. That is as simple as I can illustrate an offset reflex design or ported design within Hornresp. If you understand the first two videos along with this, then your foundation is going to be really solid to move on to more complicated designs. For myself, Gareth, adios until the next video.